yeah! So if that sounds good to you, then good news, I can tell you how to do that. So, uh, Linux, that's what I do, I like doing music with Linux. One thing that I learned just recently is something called a Neural Amp Modeler, that is quite commonly used actually, because it's free and it's open source and it's also available for both Mac and Windows and Linux now. So. Yeah, it has quite a big community there, and that's actually the thing that I, uh, many of these machine learning based amps are, they're all good. But the thing is that you need to have a lot of models to have a lot of, you know, variety to choose from. Uh, so, you know, the one that has the biggest community wins, in my opinion. Neural Amp model has quite a lot of potential to become one of the biggest. Um, as said, it's available for Mac and Windows as well, but for uh, Linux you need to use this LV2 wrapped version that is done by Mike Oliphant. Thank you, Mike, for that. And here it says that you can get uh, the best source of models is Tone Hunt, so from there you can, you can uh, uh, get some of the models. But I also found that there is this community models that is hosted in the Pelennor 2170s. Uh, GitHub page. I put all the links down, by the way. Then, um, so this is a collection that is pulled from a Facebook group uh, dedicated for the neural and modular community. Let's go back to the mix. So, yeah, so you can just you know download these, use them. Uh, you know, if you don't know, ask in the comments, whatever. Someone will help you. Um, let's go. What I have here. So I have the drums. I have bass. I have uh, rhythm track. So that's what you heard in the beginning. So let's go how I built that mix. Um, let's actually disable everything that I have here for the guitar first. And um, like that, and let's mute the bass and the drums. So now we should have the raw left and right that I have recorded separately here. So that's called like doubling. You usually always double your uh, rhythm track. That's how it sounds, how it comes out of the guitar. Um, so, I have a gate. Gate cleans out if there's any hissing or something like that. That's, uh, you know, those low, um, low volume stuff. Um, compressor compresses a bit. Uh, let's enable those. They don't do that much of a difference to the, uh, the sound. Then the actual neural amp modeler, I have it here. And uh, I have loaded the Helga Bearings Red um, MRX version 2 um, model. So it was somewhere here. There's Helga B. There's many different Helga B, Helga Bearings, something like that. But yeah, somewhere there. Um, Helga B Red um, MRX version 2, but I loaded. So if we enable that, I have the same for both left and right. And it sounds like shit, and it's supposed to, because we don't yet have the impulse response. You always need to use impulse response with this. Uh, so I gather the left and right separately with this stereo bus, and I have a stereo impulse response here. Um, so let's enable that. That's pretty, pretty rad. That's, that's, that's good. That sounds good now. Um, really good amp model, this one for metal. And uh, yeah, let's take a look how the bass goes. I, I'm not going to add the EQ yet, uh, because the EQ is done to fit the guitar to the mix, basically. So I have the same in the bass. Let's, let's disable everything first before I enable the bass. So let's, let's hear how it sounds. So that's how it comes out of the bass and, and uh, is here. So again, the gate doesn't do much. The SD1 is a distortion plugin or overdrive. Um, usually used with guitar, but I just use it here to add a, quite a lot of distortion actually. So it's, it's very distorted, but uh, yeah. Then the, then the EQ. You don't hear it much here, but uh, uh, what it does is it cuts the lowest low that basically just, you know, fucks up your speakers, basically. And then 
I do push a little bit uh, the low end here just to make it a little bit more bass heavy and then I have this 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 huge mountain here to boost around like 200 uh, Hertz just to have a little bit of like a metallic tone for it if you if you listen to that So it becomes quite a lot brighter there and if we now compare the um, or actually let's also add the guitar EQ So it's very different now when the guitar is also EQ'd and that's the guitar EQ that I have. If you remove the bass, it does so much there. Um, let's add the drums. That's how it sounds. Uh, the drums, I have a MIDI line here, just a very basic uh, beat uh, that outputs to uh, hydrogen. And into hydrogen, uh, let me actually close that, so uh, not, not that much noise when I explain. In the hydrogen, I have a drum kit that I created from the online import. I created the Moodyard kit that I uh, installed, and then I changed kick, snare, and all of the toms with the samples that I downloaded from the metalkickdrum.com. So there are free samples that you can use. And I just changed the samples. So the splashes and, and symbols and stuff like that is from the Moodyard kit, but all other things are from the the metalkickdrum.com samples. Um, so that's that's how it sounds. Yeah. And that's how the mix sounds. I still use, for the solo guitar, I use the GX plugins. I like to have more control on the tone with that. Uh, so I have a uh, GX ST2 lead pedal there. Then I have uh, the Cream Machine as an amp, just to bring some characteristics. Then I have an impulse response. And by the way, for the impulse response, I always use Guitar Hacks original between. So that's what I, what I used also for the, uh, for the rhythm guitar. Then I have an EQ here, a little bit of uh, that, bringing the mids quite a lot. Uh, chorus, delay, and reverb, and uh, and this is how the how the um, uh, solo guitar sounds. So that's all for today. Thank you. Leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe. Thanks. See you. Bye.